What's going on guys? Trapper Tom. Trapper Tom here. Um, haven't been able to trap for a little bit. Reference the uh, shoulder surgery there. But what I what I have been doing is buying stuff. <laughs> so what, uh, what my plan is to kind of show you what I got um, just in in a package from a from a buddy and then some stuff that I bought for myself and I'll show you what I got and what my plans are and uh, we'll go from there so give me a second and turn this camera around and have a look at what we got all right guys what we're what we're looking at here on the tailgate is the the new stuff that I got and then just some some other traps back behind there um, that I was using this season so we'll just go from left to right and kind of show what these things look like right out of the box and we'll go over the plan of getting them right and ready for trapping when my shoulder's right so these are all the same foothold traps here they're mb 750s um there's no offset on the jaw and there's no rubber um, from the research i've done and the folks i've talked to really comes down to personal preference for for beaver um so I'm going with the zero offset with no rubber grip and we'll go from there. But these things are just, I mean, they're, they're incredibly, incredibly large. And it, it raises no questions in my mind why I was having issues with the footholds I was using earlier that are maybe half the size. It, it's, it's unbelievable how strong these animals are. Um, so yeah, got three of those. Um, yeah, right here in front of you, I just have, I got an H stand. Um, there's some. There's some deeper runs going into dens and stuff that I was having a hard time setting these these 330s on using you know like beaver sticks like that um, just because of how deep it was. So the goal is with this H stand to be able to trap some deeper runs with those 330 body grips, and uh, I just wanted to try one out, so I only got one. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, moving on, we got a, a Belial 330 here. A um, lot of differences with the with the 330s that I was using to this Belial, um, most notably would be the actual size of them, right? So you can see that if you go side by side here, let's see if we can get a good angle with my busted up arm. They're just another inch wider, you know what I mean? So a little bit bigger, you can see that there's a gap in between the springs of the body grip when the trap is activated on this, on this Duke. And then if I hold up this Belial here, zero gap or much smaller of a gap, I should say. And the part that I'm probably the most excited about is these safety clips here. These don't slide very easily. And uh, let's see if I can. Uh, yeah, here we go. If you look in here at the safety clip, these things have free run up and down these springs, which in my limited, limited experience has uh, potential for issues when you're setting traps, especially in deep water. So having a little more confidence with these clips, happy with the bigger size. They're a little bit more money, um, but we'll see if they're worth it, right? So the trapping company, moving on to the right here, gave me this little, I don't even remember, yeah, it's a Bridger number five, little, basically a 110. I'll uh, do the same with that, get it ready for trapping and use it for, you know, muskrats, mink, stuff like that. And we'll have some fun with it, but that's the new stuff that I got and I'm excited to try it. And then moving over here, we have trap dye. We have the wax and uh, the things to make these traps right. So we'll get those going here in a couple days. There is another thing that I'm missing here. It's the uh, muriatic acid um, that's in the shed behind me. I'll get, I'll show you guys that when we're getting these traps right. But We'll go step by step getting these traps set up how I was taught by uh, someone who's been doing it a lot longer than I have. And um, it should be it should be a fun experience and something to pass the time as I'm unable to trap. So stick with me, guys, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. What's going on, guys? It is trap day. And when I say that, I mean time to get some traps ready. So um, we will start with step one, which is a muriatic acid and uh, getting all the nasty stuff that comes on these traps out of the box off of them um, and getting them ready for step two. So give me a second, I'll turn this camera around and we'll start this process, guys. Enjoy. Right, guys, we are starting the process of getting these traps set up. Yeah. The first step is gonna be soaking these bad boys in muriatic acid. Uh, don't know the actual use for it, but I know it's good for traps because that's what I was taught. So the container that I'm using is not quite big enough. So what I'll do is just kind of keep it on the clock, do a few minutes on each 
location inside and we'll just keep rotating it. So all of the metal spends time in this acid. Now this acid is important because it is going to take all of the shipping um, lubricant and, and just stuff that you don't want on there off of the trap and uh, get it ready for step two. All right guys, we're making some good progress on that uh, Belial 330. So as we're letting that kind of do its work, that acid do its work, I'll show you real quick how I prepped these uh, MB750s. So I, I wedged just a little wood screw in between these jaws to open up the gap. I want that acid and more importantly dye and wax getting all the surface or mo as much as I can of all these traps. So I've wedged just a small wood screw. You could use really anything to uh, open these jaws up just enough to have the process of getting them right. Make sure we don't leave any shiny edges that will uh, potentially bite us in the butt later. So, And then all these, like I said, we have them kind of attached to just a piece of wire. So I don't have to put my hands in the acid. I don't have to put my hands in the dye. It just keeps them separated and then I can hang them up as we're letting all of these steps kind of happen. So just wanted to show you that and we'll get these guys in their acid bath here in a few minutes. We'll do kind of a before and after on this Duke 330. This is after trapping with it for a couple months. We're just gonna get it in this acid and hang it up, let it get a get a bit of rust on there before we do the, the dye and the wax. So we'll just do a kind of follow this one along the whole way so you can see how this acid does its work. This is that uh, same Duke 330 after sitting in that muriatic acid and rinsed off and some baking soda to have the reaction kind of stop with that acid. But anyway, totally different trap. You see that shiny metal again instead of just rust. So looking good. We'll get it opened up and uh, set up to kind of dry and uh, get a thin layer of the rust that we actually want over the next couple weeks, so. And here we go with the footholds, guys. This is the first MB750. Um, again, the, the pans and the pots that I have aren't the greatest for this, but we'll make it work. We'll just kind of rotate them and uh, get the entire trap soaked in that acid and get them hung up to dry. And remember, we have that little spacer in between the jaws just so we can get good coverage everywhere, so. I'll get a quick video of when these are all hung up and then we'll check in in a week or so. And here we have the end of step one. I got my footholds hung up. Got my body grips hung up. You can really see the size difference now if you compare that Duke 330 on the right to that Belial 330 on the left. So, you know, bigger trap, bigger beavers, right? And that's my theory anyway. So, yeah, that's all we're going to do for today, guys. And we'll check in a week depends on you know the weather and the humidity and stuff um, but I'll show you what we're looking for before we start dying these traps so we'll check in in a little bit and go from there thanks for watching